Joining me to discuss this is author, attorney, associate dean at Troy University, professor of economics, professor of law, all around good guy, and my longtime friend, Alan Mendenhall. Professor Mendenhall, welcome here, my dear friend. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure, Judge. Thank you for having me on the show. Of course. Aren't propaganda and disinformation protected speech? If I want to say something like, Vladimir Putin is a good guy and I hope he takes over all of Ukraine, can't I say that without fear of prosecution? Absolutely. You ought to be able to say that without fear of prosecution. Look, in this situation, if there's something like actual money laundering taking place, fine. That's a prosecutable crime. But the fact that these allegations are, are brought under the International Emergency Economic Powers Act, among other things, suggests to me that the facts are pretty flimsy. I mean, this is of, uh, of a variety. Like It reminds me of the Sedition Act of 1798. We also had a Sedition Act in 1918, an Espionage Act of 1917. We had the McCarthy era, we had the COINTEL FBI in the 60s, the Pentagon Papers in the 70s, and we had sort of a post-9-11 uh, surveillance culture. This, this strikes me as being in that vein. Um, we know that uh, a lot of the Russia collusion allegations from the 2016 election were discredited. We know the Steele dossier has been largely discredited. And I think this is not really about Russia or protecting democracy. It's not about a, a shadowy Russia troll farm. It's about control, uh, control of information, control of narratives, and control of people. Because the government fears uh, free-thinking Americans questioning the prevailing orthodoxies upheld by universities, mainstream journalists, and the corporate media. You know, it's a great response, uh, Professor Mendenhall, truly. Uh, the, the, the one that really intrigues me is prosecuting two Russians who are also Americans, they uh, have dual citizenship, for sitting in Moscow, working in Moscow, and talking on a Russian television station. How can that possibly violate American law? I don't get it. Yeah, unless there are facts that I don't know about that haven't been disclosed, I don't, I don't think it does. Um, when we examine the treatment of just ordinary, uh, ordinary people like the, uh, the Duke lacrosse players or, um, I don't know, the Covington High School students, we see how even in our own media we get uh, manipulation according to certain narratives, and these ought not to be prosecuted. I think that labeling dissenting speech as disinformation and propaganda is an attempt to delegitimize and exclude uh, certain forms of knowledge from acceptable discourse. And because uh, this particular set of facts involves Russia, it fits the Biden administration's right. narrative. It, you, it, you, it know what it, you know what it does, Professor Mendenhall? It chills free speech. It causes exactly. people to have second thoughts about whether or not they want to criticize the government. And you and I both know, and you can explain this to our viewers, the Supreme Court has said chilling free speech profoundly and directly violates the First Amendment. You have the last word. That's correct. I think we need to be skeptical whenever government labels certain information as false or disinformation or misinformation. Uh, we need to withhold judgment and refrain from accepting claims as fact until we independently verify them. I mean, we're, we're dealing with a government that has yet to even disclose all the JFK assassination documents. Uh, in an age of contested truths, you know, the, the, the power to define reality is the ultimate form of control. And we need to ask ourselves, do we control ourselves or does someone else control us? I hope that we can control ourselves. Professor Alan Mendenhall, always a pleasure, my dear friend. I hope you come back and visit with us again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judge.